I normally start out with the uh, charts, but since I have you here, uh, could you could you do the the charts, and then I'll do the I'll do the news. <laughs> yeah, because you want to you want to prove that I that I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me change some screens up, some things. I'm doing. What do you want to say? I do Bitcoin and I do Hex, but we could skip Bitcoin if you want. Uh, we just do Hex. All right, let me get There's my... There's not really much going on with Bitcoin, honestly, anyway. Never never was, never will be. I don't know, dude. It's Don't, don't discount the importance of it. Well, yeah, but yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, you, I'm not trying to correct your opinion. Well, that's why I collect. That's I'm why. Just, I, that's why I, I cover it every day because it's. Yeah, it I I don't discount it because it's involved in our overall market and what we're doing, uh, whether we like it or not. Uh, wow, that Maxi's going crazy, man. It's crazy. Oh, All right, let me okay. show the screen. I'll bring this one up. I'll show you what I what I because I, I just finished up my stream on dca this week oh nice so i, I these are these are the screens that i use for that all right let's see there we go let's see we'll switch over to bitcoin uh do, do, do. um so you can see i've got maxi up here somewhere i don't know where it's showing here i added it to the wrong place on the screen let me drop that off all right go to my one year auto People want to play Maxi for the uh, for the for the Pulse Jam launch. It's pumping. Yeah, well, it was I man, it went to such a discount. It was ridiculous. I mean, oh, it was wow. crazy. It was down. I was almost like at hex price, um, one to one. So, and I I think that's a good thing to know about because I think we're going to see more of that. On. Uh, we're going to see more of that on both ETH and, of course, on Pulse Chain, uh, because when Pulse Chain launches, the the major attention is going to be on Pulse, Pulse X, and Hex, right? Not that other people aren't interested in other things. Of course they are, but that that'll be where the major attention is. So that's probably where you're going to have the greatest opportunity for someone who got their free maxi and may not be. It's hard to imagine this would be the case, but it could be the case. They may not be. Uh, as invested in the maxi long term on Pulse Chain, and they're willing to give it away for almost free, right? Mm. And so you might, so there'll be you insert token name here. It doesn't matter whether it's maxi or anything else. So if you have something that you, you know, of course, I I would steer towards those top three, but we do have the peripherals and Hedron and Icosa. Uh, as well as the Maximus Dow tokens, if they go on to some sort of extreme ratio discount, I, I mean, there's only so many things you can chase, but it, it would seem like it, it would be the right move. Um, but I, so lines on this screen, just to show you guys what I'm doing, um, I follow what they call the golden ratio multiplier. And these lines are all indicators along for that. And I have a cross down here that I, that I was looking for for a while, which is um, an 111 day moving average and the 350 day moving average, which in the past has signified that we are past the bear for me and many others, right? So that we're past the bear. Um, once you hit to this point, you go above because it's while the 111 might dip back down to the one to the 350 again. Um, in the past, if you go by the past, um, typically we stay above these lines at this point and you can go back in history and look at that um so it's an indicator that i use but it's only it's you know it's a trailing indicator so it's you only see it after it's already happened so you're saying um, that uh the the black line is support it, it can act as support if i go to auto you'll see it's got so, one bounce already it's got one uh yeah you can see it bounced off of there it, it acts as uh acts as resistance when you're below it much like any other average right and then and then the support once you get above it and when we go way back out you know other people have described this as the fibonacci stuff right you go way back out to the last not not a recent high back here in uh in november and april of la of 21 but you go all the way back to um, 17 here and you can see the same two lines once we went below it it signified we were in the bear this is rough rough right mm -hmm. signified confirmed that we definitely were in the bear. If you didn't already know we were in the bear by then, you knew, right? 
at 8,000 value mm-hmm. for Bitcoin. And then it just went down, down, down. And then we, we came back up and went above it. And other than the, um, other than the, the, the CVID, um, you know, dip that took place in 20, you basically stay above it. Mm-hmm. Right. That's kind of what's, what's happened in the past. Now, will that repeat? I don't know, but I use that as kind of an indicator and you can see that on Ethereum as well. A very similar, you know, type of a type of a cross, similar action previously. And so naturally I want to apply that to hex and look at hex and see where we are with hex. And we also were following something very similar with that. Um, but we did drop like drop down when we went from twelve and down. But now we're now you can see we're kind of using it as a little bit of resistance prices right up against it. Oh wow. Right. And so it would be you know well that was that was that was the v4 the v4 uh took it over the took it took it over the finish line so to speak you know that that extra test that made ever made it made it made it uh go below the support yeah yeah it went below it and then now that we're looking like we're going to launch it back up because we're going to be highly volatile so these are the types of charts that i look at more for confirmation than like future stuff right so when i'm talking with axis and he's going over stuff he's looking at uh you know he's looking at things like the rsi and the mayor multiple and that type of stuff to you know to hit you know to be able to indicate where to go with things but using uh, the golden I'll, i'm going to do a do a patreon video on this one shortly probably this week um using the golden ratio multiplier I think I can pick the tops. I did last year or, or last time. I think I can pick the tops. I can pick when to begin DCA out. I think I can pick when to, D, you know, when to DCA in and then repeat that cycle within reason. It doesn't get you the top, so it doesn't get you like, um, I could pick the top when it happens, but it doesn't predict, hey, this is what the top will be. It just gives you a the time frame for when I should do that. And so rather than waiting for like the big giant peak, um, if you're looking to take profits on a multi-year strategies, right, you can maybe use that to scalp. Like, Mm -hmm. no, you're in the zone. Sure, if you can call the exact top, you'll get the exact best amount, Mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, best best profit, that type of thing. All yeah, right. so things are things look like uh, you know we're we're getting back up to six maybe, right? And you know maybe we'll go above it. Some people have been calling for higher than six cents on this. Um, I kind of suspect that everybody who's in, except for like the real FOMO guys, maybe we'll see like a pump on FOMO. But I think we're probably approaching sell the news. So you know what I said? I said that there might not be a sell the news because we didn't have much of a buy the rumor. Maybe, maybe, maybe. There's just so many, but you know, people have been stacking hex for two years. Yeah. You know, and and I even I was even looking at it myself. I'm like, wow. I st- you start getting that degen. I started getting that degen feeling, and I'm like. Well, I could sell right now, you know, and then whatever happens if if EHEX, this would be purely an EHEX play, not a pulse chain play, because if I was to sell, I'm not going to get my copy maybe, right? So I have yeah. to give up the idea that I get a copy. And I don't want to give that idea up, so I didn't do it. But, you know, but I'm thinking, well, I could sell right now, and if we see a, a 90% dip, I could get five times more, 10 times more, seven times more X, you know, on Ethereum. But yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. But who knows? Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I guess we'll have to wait and see. What, what I, I, I definitely, I definitely am in the the buy mentality, uh, especially with the with the copy coming up. But um, mm-hmm. th- there are people talking about possibly, you know, big dip, and it's going to be interesting. So I definitely don't think that there's going to be a big dip after the first two days. You know, meaning meaning there's going to be no uh, e hex, um, diver, you know, divergence where it, it it completely dips and everything else pumps because the the liquidity bonding. But uh, the first two days when they're not bonded, uh, it could it could dip, it could dip. But uh, 
I, I don't know. I don't think 90%, especially now. Maybe if we were up at 15, I don't, I don't, I don't think we're going. I don't know, though. I don't know. What's 90% on the current price? 90%. It's half, half, a, half, a, half a penny on Ethereum. No way. We're not getting half a penny. That That's 90% though, right? Yeah, that's... What, what's important... So, yeah, I, I don't think that will happen. However... Is it possible? Yes. 90%, 80%, 70%, 60%, whatever you want to play with. I think the important thing about it is that you need to know what your strategy is. It's good. You don't have to do this people because really, really people obviously don't do it a lot. <laughs> but, um, it, you know, for me, I look at it like I need to know my strategy so that, um, when I'm sitting here and I just made this decision, let's just say as we're talking, right? I've made my decisions. I have my staked hex. I have my liquid. I have my ERC twenties. I have my my sacrifices. Right? All that stuff's programmed in. I know what's going to happen, right? Um, so where can I get bit? Where I get bit is if in the middle of this I change my strategy, right? That's where potentially I could take a big risk and lose or take a very big risk and and win right and so then the question is let's think about all the giant risks i've taken and how much i've won huh well <laughs> the, 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 yeah i don't have a big count right so my i don't have a large count but what i do have a have is uh, the fact that I know that when I had a plan and I've used DCA, I typically have done better over time, slower moves. And so what does all this mean? It means that instead of freaking out, if people make it dip by selling, I can go, huh, and just not do anything and wait and wait. You know, and and that and that could be the best strategy maybe that I have in mind is just to not do anything. You know, I agree. I think so. Yeah, I I think so. Especially if you could if you could earn yield and stuff like that. Yeah, because it, you know we're it, it's all about the time frames, right? I mean, if I mean if I go nuts now, uh, because. Let's say the worst. Let's say we you, you maybe described it as the worst possible scenario, right? We're going to go down to half a penny. Let's just say that happens. So then, what then? What then? Buy. Oh, well, if you could, yeah, sure. If you can't, what then? Hold, right? Why sell? Why freak? Right? Because we're in the beginning of a of a bowl. Okay, maybe technically we're not in a bowl yet, but based on four year cycle, we're in the second year of a cycle, third year would be coming up, you would expect things to rebound. So you just have to have at least that two year time frame. Yeah. And, and it's, it's looking like it's playing out according to that. And, and time's on our side, like, uh, now's a great time to accumulate. We're down 90%. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be at this point. I'm not thinking to the downside anymore. I'm really thinking to the upside. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and we have the pulse chain launch and stuff like that. So, well, yeah, and you know, it does. You know, it does depend on the asset that you're in, for sure, right? Mm -hmm. Because there are some assets that never ever come back. We've seen that with crypto, right? There's there's some that come back and then some that don't. Um, but if we look back at um, if we look at Bitcoin, we look at um, Ethereum, you look at Hex. If you had simply just taken a DCA approach to all three of those, you would be winning right now. Yeah, you would be winning. Now, of course, the more volatile the asset, so things that are further out from Ethereum and uh, and uh, Bitcoin, um, you know, you're going to have lower lows and, you know, a lot more volatility and, and you end up with higher highs. But, you know, in terms of percentage and ROI, but if we, you know, I was looking at that on my stream today, again, uh, just looking at from the launch of Hex, if you had been DCAing consistently since the launch of Hex in Hex, ETH or Bitcoin, you would be up right now at a very, at a very low number, which means you're really set up for this next, this next uh, run. 100%, 100%. All right. So uh, I guess uh, that's it for the charts.